So I made a lot of mistakes in my life and even more in my entrepreneurial life. So in today's video, I'm sharing with you six mistakes that I did as an entrepreneur, as a beginner entrepreneur. And uh, yeah, if only I could turn back time. Before we get started, make sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already and hit the like button if you like this type of content. And also, why not leave me a comment? I always respond to your comments. So the first mistake that I made as an entrepreneur is that I started with a lot of overheads meaning I had rent to pay, I had staff to pay, I had insurance to pay, I had so many phone plans to pay, and these are actually overheads that could be detrimental to the success of the business, particularly startups. So my recommendation, and if I were to do this again, I would start with what I have. I wouldn't actually go into that, particularly if you don't have much visibility of the market. And I will come to this point again. So if you want to start a business, start with the resources that you have. And if you have a big, big plan and a big business that you want to set up, so definitely ask for other people's money first before you can actually use your personal money. So do not get into debt and uh, huge overheads from the beginning. Start with what you have, see whether you're already making money, if it's being profitable, and then if it is, then you can invest a little bit more. But do not start with like, <laughs> just like I did with the big team and rent to pay, that's just like, too much. So the second mistake that I made as a beginner entrepreneur that was like years and years ago is that I didn't study the market. I know we all talk about studying the market and checking the market gap and the market's needs and wants etc. I didn't do any of that. I just wanted to make my products happen and <laughs> create them and then that, that was pretty much it. So huge, huge, huge mistake because you are creating a product or a service for other people, not just for yourself. So you want to make sure that your product is needed or that people actually are wanting it. You need to do many surveys and focus groups and, and really talk to your audience, check what, what did they want. What did they want from you? What do they want that is not already out there? And how you can help them better? So if I were to start a business over, this is what I would actually do, is spend more time with my potential customer, try to understand them better, and then create and craft a product or a service according to their needs and wants, not according to my needs and wants. The third mistake that I made, and it's kind of linked to the second one, is that I spent a lot of time crafting my product, perfecting my product, and I was so focused on the product, but not on the end user and end consumer and my final client. And that's a huge, huge mistake because your focus should be on the client on the person who will be using your product or service and the quality of your product is important as well but not as much as keeping your clients in focus because they're the one who are going to buy your product they're the one who are going to be triggered to buy your product so if i were to do this again i would spend less time perfecting my products and services and more time talking to my audience, talking to my potential customers and clients and really getting out there and get to know them better because I didn't have a clear picture on who they are. I knew who they are. I just thought, yeah, these are the people who need my product, but I didn't know exactly what sort of persona they were, uh, where they live, how much money they earn, what are their ages, what are their professions, uh, what are their tastes in terms of food and movies. Like you need to be really specific when it comes to your clients because you cater for a specific niche and that niche, you need to own it. You need to know who your community is. And I spent way too much time focus on my product and so little time 
of focusing on my clients and that's a huge mistake. Another huge mistake that I made is that I relied completely on other people to sell my products and services. And the problem is when you do that at the beginning is that you don't actually practice your pitch. So you find that your salespeople are probably better than you when it comes to like communicating your products and services. And that's really bad because if they leave the company, you have no one who's gonna actually take over because you are too shy or maybe you are too focused on the product and not caring about your customers. I mean, this is a simple mistake to avoid because you need to be the number one salesperson of your company. You should be able to sell any product that you offer, any service that you offer, talk about it very comfortably, believe in it, and go out there and practice it. Because I believed in my products. I had a pitch, but I actually didn't get out there and pitch. I relied on people to do it for me because I thought that was their job and my job is to do something else, run the company. But that's ridiculous. Today, if I were to do this again, I would actually go out there, practice my pitch and see the reaction of people live. Not not like reporter because it's really different. So when you see people's reaction right away, it's a different story and you make notes and you consider those insights for your future projects and how you do things in general. The next mistake that I did is, I talked about it earlier, but I'm gonna have to say because it's a mistake on its own, is that I didn't have a clear picture of who my ideal client was. I knew I catered for a specific type of client, but I, at the beginning I was trying to satisfy everyone. Like each client who asked me for a quote, I said yes. And it took me a while to understand that I cannot actually work with anyone and everyone. And that at the end of the day, I wanted to work with a certain type of clients but it took me a while to get to that so if you are looking to save yourself time and also energy definitely focus first on thinking of who is your dreamy client your ideal client and then go find them saying that you're catering for 25 30 years old people living in a big city such as Paris or London or Casablanca is not enough. You actually need to de go deeper. Where, I mean, are they students or are they professionals? Where do they study or where would they do work? Where do they hang out? What are their behaviors? What are their attitudes? Know them more than they actually know themselves so that when you communicate to them, the message is so clear, it's so concise, it's like niche down that they completely understand it. And you as a business owner, you feel that business is easy, it's comfortable not having to deal with other type of personalities or other type of clients that you may not want to work with. So the last mistake that I would like to share with you, but I'm sure that I have made other mistakes as well, but this is the one that comes to my mind, is that I didn't persist long enough. In other words, in my mind, I launched a business and I worked on it for probably a year and then when I see that it's not taken off, I just drop it. And now I am in a place where I can say that one year, it's not long enough. You need to do things much longer to see the results, which means you have to try different strategies and you have to uh, probably invest more or ask for more financing, but you need to find a way to make it work. You cannot just say that after a year, I tried and it didn't work because there's always another way of making it work and that requires time. So when you're doing a business plan, you need to make sure you're giving yourself enough time to work on your business, to learn from your mistakes and to grow because you cannot expect all of that to happen in such a short period of time particularly if you're just starting in entrepreneurship, if you don't have any experience yet. And in my case, I didn't have any experience. I didn't do any business degree. I had to figure it out all by myself. I 
didn't have any family or friends who were entrepreneurs so a lot of times I felt myself super super frustrated because I didn't have anyone to ask and it took me a while to build a network, to join membership groups, to have friends and like-minded people who are entrepreneurs as well. So today, if I have a question, I can just ask it. There is someone to answer that question for me. 12 years ago, I didn't have anyone. No one was there to help me. No one knew what exactly I was going through. And even when I asked someone, they gave me an answer, but I feel like it doesn't fit my reality. So I needed to make those mistakes. And I hope that this video will help you avoid them. If you have any other mistakes that come to your mind or mistakes that you have done in your life as well, or particularly in business, definitely let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to have this conversation with you. Thank you again so much for watching. Before you go, remember you can still sign up for my free course, Find Your Life Mission. You will find the link down below. It's a course that will help you find your life, eradicate all the confusion that you have in your mind and really explore the potential that you have and see really clearly the mission that you have on this planet that you may not be aware of today. Definitely do the course and get back to me with some feedback. It's a free class. I hope you will enjoy it. And I really hope that you'll do the work because if you just watch it like any other video and just move to something else, you may not get the most out of it. So when you sign up, watch the course and then do the work and then come back to me with some feedback. All right, guys. Thank you again so much for watching and I'll see you very soon. Bye.